Hey, uh, well, this is the first to last Nerdum. I'm Thomas. I'm here with Mike, and this is our grab bag. Uh, our grab bags where we uh, talk about various things, and uh, we just throw them in the bag, pull them out, and see what we have to talk about. Hey, Mike, what's going on with you? Hey, uh, first uh, top of the line is uh, what I wanted to, uh, uh, well, oh, here we go. All right. Uh, well, here we go. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Uh, I want to shout out our page. Uh, we are um, very fast approaching 100 episodes. Mm -hmm. We are uh, putting together a plan for a little surprise. Uh, yeah. Even though it's just me and Thomas, like uh, we're going to involve <laughs> uh, all the nerds. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you what, Thomas, I am very grateful that it is our 100th episode, which is mm -hmm. basically, uh, we're about two year mark. Um, you do two shows per thing. We're mm -hmm. a little under that if you take 52 weeks out of the year for uh, each year. That would be 104, yeah. whatever. Well, we, we had some uh, breaks here and there. Anyway, yeah. the point is, please go check out our uh, channel on YouTube. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. If you don't like it, let us know. Good cop, bad cop. Uh, we just covered Avatar 2, uh, Way of the Water. Um, mm -hmm. I was very, very surprised by it. Uh, and I am not an individual who saw the first one in the theater or otherwise. I saw a couple of clips. Um, I was able to flow onto it. Uh, not my general taste for sci-fi. That's okay. Uh, the general consensus was that you should go check it out yourself. Yep. Um, because it is yep. a, uh, oh, a good block of addition onto the uh, franchise. Uh, and I'll, I got to tell you, uh, if you told me 10 years ago that uh, James Cameron would come back again and make this. I would be like, <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. like uh, Titanic 2? Uh huh. Sure. Uh, but he yeah. did. And yeah. uh, it is. So, uh, what, what, yeah. what say you, Thomas? Yeah, yeah he had uh, some uh, determination. And uh, for, for the episode, we brought along our uh, special guest, uh, Lori. Uh, she's the uh, super fan of Avatar. So, yeah. uh, we got her perspective on the whole thing since we're both of us are aren't like super fans we're uh lukewarm at the at the most so <laughs> so yeah uh, check that out uh if you're uh if you either like or dislike see if uh, your opinion uh falls within uh one of our ranges as far as uh what you're what you thought of uh, avatar and avatar way of the water uh but yeah we've got some news um yes, i think we we're do. gonna cover james gunn and his reign over dc studios holy, holy crap it was about uh this time last week tuesday or so a uh, big dc video came through i saw it i watched the raw perspective i saw a couple uh, opinion videos or uh, whatever uh i will say well i'll save what i thought for your opinion on this particular topic since you're bringing this to us yeah yeah um yeah I, I uh i didn't watch too many opinions just because i was like well i have my own so oh for I sure guess, uh, yeah <laughs> um uh, yeah I, I did watch um i i did recommend that that casually comics last uh last week and uh i watched her kind of overview on it and then i grabbed this article to uh have a uh, have a list of all the, the various titles if you keep scrolling it'll go through like uh creature commandos and uh, Waller, which is the uh, the TV shows. Uh, what I was um, interested in was uh, the Authority, uh, which was a a Wildstorm uh, comic book that uh, uh, DC ended up buying out um, Wildstorm and acquiring uh, the Authority. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's one of uh, one of my my favorite comic books, uh, to be honest. Uh, so I'm kind of interesting to see how they they adapt it. Uh, the authorities uh, more of a darker uh, comic book. Um, they have you know the uh, Midnighter, who's sort of the um, Batman like character in it, and they have um, I forget the um, the Superman type character in there uh but 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 they're both gay and are in a relationship so um th that's that's sort of how i i like it instead of turning say the actual batman character gay if you create a, a kind of a similar character uh and then explore that that relationship between a batman type character and a superman character that are right. gay and are in a relationship 
you know, that's, that's kind of, that's interesting, you know, um, that you're exploring two new characters sure. that, that are kind of like that. Um, that's, that's, I believe how you should do it as, as opposed to, you know, changing, you know, decades worth of history of a character, uh, just to explore that, that aspect, you know, of things. <laughs> yeah, I, I am, um, this kind of circles back to, uh, and we very briefly covered it. We skipped over the top of it uh, unofficially in the in the main show. Uh, we talked a little bit about Last of Us. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, episode three, it's got a lot of buzz. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I think it was perfectly fine as it is. It's kind of like the um, Parks and Rec reverse Nick Offerman that you're used to, but gay. Cool. <laughs> awesome. You move on whatever yeah that's fine uh didn't preclude me from fast forwarding through the scenes i don't really give two craps about like uh <laughs> could have been like i could have been like a uh you know very young uh you know heterosexual male and i could have been like you know what i don't want to see any kissing it has nothing to do with the topic matter like i don't don't care got it okay. <laughs> they're 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 item they're a thing they're whatever cool got it sets it up for later cool uh but yeah. Um, I am curious about that because you see how he did Suicide Squad 2 um, and thereabouts, um, and there's some little feedback there. Uh, I, I took it at, at face value. I am on board uh, officially with the, the thing. I don't care uh, if it means clear the house, means get rid of Henry Cavill. Cool. All right. You got to do it. Fine. Uh, you got to get rid of this, that, whatever. That's fine. Uh, Gal Gadot, which uh, saddens me because uh, <laughs> I think that uh, compared to Henry Cavill, you know, like where um, where they're going and the reason why they had to release him. And I don't think it's fair how it's been treated in the um, in the fandom and the press. I, I think it's very unfair, in my opinion, uh, because like um, the big thing that I have at Axagrine, a uh, uh, soapbox of jump up on is the fact that like hold on guys you say you want everything new you you want a new thing you you want something new and then you turn around and then you kick the same can around the the, the block and you want henry cavill well if you want a henry cavill i'm going to be honest with you if you want a henry cavill <laughs> you should have showed up in 2012 and made man of steel a blockbuster that didn't happen was it good? Did I enjoy it? I love it. I love it. I love the duality of man. I love the duality of like hero, anti, uh, anti-hero. Um, there's a lot there that I love, but at the same time, I want to go on to the future. And the only way to do that is to fresh cut, kill everything that's old, and then you move on. Um, and I wish that more of the fandom, more of the vocal fandom would come in defense of this concept of like, okay, you know what? We don't know anything. You don't know anything. You don't know nothing. Okay. You knew that something was going to be cut. So Henry Cavill cannot be a surprise. This is the big problem that I have with the, the whole fandom comic book backlash. Um, and it's like, well, guys, hold on. Do, what, what do you want? You, <laughs> I mean, do you want Henry Cavill from like, you know, like whatever? Or do you, or you want something new in DC? There's literally right in front of you, James Gunn is telling you how it's going to go. You might not like it and that's fine but like how about we give it a fair view and see if it sucks or not if it sucks I ab- absolutely go after it but if it doesn't um i am more on the side of giving him the space to grow because uh, i don't know like um let his first outing be uh, a judgment on him and then the second third and whatever like let's see let's see like uh we've never had this before um it is ridiculous uh, even on the marvel side if you want to take disney's side of it okay you don't have a coherent no such thing disney movies they rule the roost period in a discussion doesn't matter if you like them if you hate them if you're in between doesn't matter normie or not they rule the roost but one thing they have not been able to do is do what james gunn is telling you what he can do which is um animated a uh, movie live action whatever video game whatever storylines will be he says so that it's going to be intertwined all right um i'm okay 
I, I am basically as a fan, I am okay with giving him the time and space to do that. And if it sucks, well, <laughs> I'll be the first on here to jump on it and, and tell you that it, that's, that's so, but I agree with you. Like uh, he gave me enough. I had no clue what the authority is. I have no clue what half of what he said was. Mm-hmm. I am not familiar and I am a Superman fan through and through. I have come across bizarro, uh, stupid thirties, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like villains that they would never put on the, on the air or whatever. I, I get it. But like he had me intrigued and, uh, I want to give him, uh, I guess what I would say is, um, give him the time and space, um, fair, fair chance to hit the mark. If he doesn't, <laughs> we're going to know about it, obviously. But like, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I guess my, my bigger complaint is like, I have this big thing of like, everybody's bitching about everything. Well, what do you want? <laughs> I mean, what do you want? Like, what do you, he's only, he can only do a couple things. Like, do you want the same old? Like, I mean, like, I, I just don't, I, I don't understand that. Yeah. Like, and to well, me as a com, as mm-hmm. a fan, yeah. I, but, I, uh, obviously kick that out and say, that's not for me. Like, I don't, know what you want like what do you want from him? i mean yeah his um his uh track record as uh of films he's you know he's he's hit it out of the park uh every time so yeah it, but he's his this kind of focuses on the obscure and quirky so um that's obviously um the the slant that i see with with his slate of uh films and uh well maybe maybe dc needs that sort of uh quirky side of things to really kind of make itself different from uh marvel because marvel uh has they hold you know um you know pristine sort of superhero kind of side of things uh whereas maybe he needs to kind of mix it up and make it a little bit more edgy uh with his dc side of things and um i'm excited about the swamp thing movie uh it's one of my my favorite characters and uh, he has a relationship with uh, John Constantine, and I, I I didn't hear anything about maybe a cross crossover with him, but I, I I would be very excited about you know maybe Keanu Reeves as John Constantine making an appearance in the uh, the Swamp Thing uh, movie that would be um, be exciting, uh, and also he he mentioned that he wanted the actors that the they cast the actors for the animated roles. Uh, that they would also, if they made a live action movie or show with with those characters, it'd be the same actors. Uh, so you have that continuity there of of the actors as well. Uh, and uh, like Mike said, there would be a uh, continuity between the the movies as well. Although they'd have have their elsewhere or Elseworld movies uh, that are separate, like the the Batman movies right uh, that they're doing so well uh, and, and, have that. and he's given himself space to run because um you know inherently that the um heath ledger or not uh, excuse me joker uh character is its own kind of thing and mm-hmm. maybe maybe not it might collide with matt reeves batman probably not but um th- th- there's enough there i i just am always on the side of like let him go yeah. Um, I do not see anything substantial to complain about um, that is legitimate or gives me license to really dig in on James Gunn and be like, hold, hold on, dude. Hold on one second. You got to like, I just don't, I don't I understand that. I don't understand the, um, I don't understand the fandom or at least the YouTube verse version of this where everybody is is uh you know making a video and they're and then and they're not uh there's some other dumb vid- drama going on it seems like youtube is about the latest dumb drama that it is <laughs> that's fine that's whatever but like i will say um i think it was good that that happened because it kind of slipped under the radar um and there's probably a lot, a lot more stupid stuff um that yeah. would be there <laughs> but <laughs> yeah uh at the end of the day i am a pro give james gunn the time and space and then we'll see where it goes you know yeah um, yeah, and um, I, I I like that. Uh, uh, yeah, some people are complaining about him skipping uh, to Damian Wayne as as Robin, uh, but but because uh, that's 
uh, James Gunn's favorite Robin. Uh, but I always enjoyed the Damian Wayne character. So right. uh, that's that's fascinating. Um, but yeah, I don't have, have any problem with that. Uh, yeah, uh, all of all of his things that he mentioned, I know that uh, they can't do a second season of Peacemaker right now since, you know, James Gunn's involved in all the um, all the productions and whatnot. So he can't focus in on, on one right. series uh, to direct it. But uh, so that's that's a, a bit of a, a downside. But I think he mentioned that there will be a Waller TV series, which is based off the head of uh, the uh, Suicide Squad. So I'm not sure exactly what that one is going to involve, but that one um could be interesting as well yeah for sure yeah uh, uh, i'm excited um i hope best for dc um and that's yep. where i'll leave it um <laughs> uh well and, and i know you and i are on the same page for like just like hey you got plenty of stories that cover all kinds of stories and genres and uh genders and all, all that kind of stuff <laughs> like let's let the story do the work and not tell you what to think with the yeah. uh, message or whatever. Yeah, let the let the stories do the heavy lifting. <laughs> All right. Uh next next up, uh, what do you want to go to? Um, we could go to well, there's there's good news and bad news as far as physical media. Uh what what do you want? The good news or the bad news first? I'll take the bad news and we'll uh, roll into the good news. Hopefully. All right. Well, this is, this is the bad news. Uh, film films at, uh, at home, uh, brings it to you. I, I didn't find an article that kind of went over this, uh, this video, um, kind of explains it, uh, best buy, uh, movie prices for their Blu-rays and DVDs are insane. Um, you can get, uh, the latest Superman or Spider-Man, uh, no way home, uh, uh 4k for 45 dollars at best buy <laughs> uh everything is uh between 20 and uh, 10 and 20 dollars more at best buy and basically what it breaks down to is uh best buy has introduced this um program this uh membership called uh, i think it's tech something or other uh okay. i forget the name of it because I, I have no interest in joining it but it's basically like uh amazon prime um so you pay your 120 i think it's 120 bucks a year and uh, basically you get your their their geek squad access to their geek squad uh all access to that and as a benefit to having that is that they discount their blu-rays and 4ks back down to the price that amazon and everybody else sells them for <laughs> so so basically best buy is trying to kill their uh, their uh uh their physical media section um and actually i haven't been in best buy in uh, over a year but i think um a lot of the locations have done away uh, completely with with their sections uh, but uh, for those of you that um, actually have picked up a Blu-ray or uh, 4K um, at Best Buy here and there, uh, don't anymore. Because <laughs> if you if you don't pay attention to the price and grab it, uh, you're going to be paying uh, 10 to 20 bucks more than what you normally should be. Uh, so yeah, just just avoid Best Buy for any physical media. Uh, go to the uh, go to Walmart, Target, or Amazon uh <laughs> to get it at a a sane price instead of an insane price of a uh, best buy yeah no uh wherever you can get it i i take it from you i i <laughs> like all my stuff is rent uh and and what i mean by that is rent sh the video for a couple days or 40 hours or whatever they say whatever yeah. or you pay 20 20 bucks and you might own it for own for two years i don't know like i have had to call apple and be like hey uh what happened to my uh man with no name trilogy uh license like for all all three of those and uh -huh. they gave me back fair fair word to them they they gave me back the difference but i yeah. don't know we'll see how long amazon we'll, we'll see how long amazon wants a career uh good customer service we'll see uh but it is what it is uh so you can always um buy physical media <laughs> yeah and uh you don't have to worry about any of that 
stuff. Yeah. <laughs> right, Thomas? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep, yep. All the uh, Blu-rays and 4Ks on my uh, shelf are going anywhere. They're they're not going to get uh get someone's not going to come in and edit out certain scenes that are now uh, trigger uh, have trigger warnings and have to be removed uh, for the sensitive audiences out there. Uh, they they remain untouched <laughs> except by me when I want to see them. Uh, <laughs> <Right>. <clears throat> but yeah, so this is the good news. Uh, Mill Creek has uh, entertainment has signed a deal with uh, Disney to produce uh, Blu-rays and 4Ks and DVDs of their properties because Disney at this point has re really no interest in uh, putting out stuff on uh, Blu-ray or DVD, except for their major things like their Marvel movies or their uh, huge Disney properties. They bought uh, 20th Century Fox and all of those uh, big Fox releases that were going to come out uh, totally got axed uh, by Disney. So I didn't get my uh, 4K, uh, deluxe 4K of Fight Club that I've been wanting forever uh because of them so hopefully with this with mill creek they'll be able to pick up some of those and release them on blu-ray and um dvd and 4k uh so i'm looking forward to that uh so this is good news for uh people that um uh, follow physical media and so all those disney properties that you thought would never get a blu-ray release uh, may have hope now <laughs> Indeed, indeed. Yeah, well, uh, all, all in favor of uh, having an option to uh, go out to uh, get something that you actually own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Except for Best Buy, don't go to Best Buy. <laughs> well, uh, YMMV, your mileage may vary. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I think we were going to, uh, well, what, what did you have? Uh, well, we already covered that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that's, uh, the last one. That's uh, just some sad news. Uh, uh, oh, genre yeah. favorite Julian Sands, who's been in a, a lot of great movies like Warlock. Uh, he's, uh, he went hiking and, uh, has disappeared. Uh, unfortunately he's been gone for three weeks. Uh, so, um, doesn't, doesn't look good. No, I think I saw an article about his, that tech behind his rescue and uh -huh. no 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 good news unfortunately um yeah yeah this is not good um let's let's hope he i mean you never know like let's hope right. he just wanders to the right folks and gets what he needs and mm -hmm. he's not you know expired we'll see yeah 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 um I think I'd seen him in something recently. Uh, he's still, still, still had his acting chops. So, um, yeah, it'll be a, a great loss if he, if he is gone. Now, gas station was your uh, YouTube pick, right? Yeah, yeah, gas All station. Right. All uh, right, for that though. Uh -huh. Yeah, we could uh, talk about my books. Um, yeah, uh, I, uh, I, I did mention Elric uh, of Melon Bone. Uh, a few weeks back um, after I'd read a couple of the stories in this volume I did finish it uh, and I, I really enjoyed it I got the, the book right here with me uh, right. but <laughs> but yeah um, I did learn a little bit more about the the history of uh, of the character and I thought I'd share a little bit of it um, there was a magazine called um, I forget. I think it's weird uh, science and fantasy or something like that. Uh, and the the um, the editor had called out for uh, some sword and sorcery stories in the vein of Conan, okay. and uh, so that inspired uh, Michael Moorcock to write uh, the first series of nine short stories of Elric. And so those, I, I think, not all of them got published in that that magazine. Uh, but yeah, that was the genesis of the character. And then uh, much like Conan, the stories that he wrote, uh, the novels and the short stories, uh, he wrote them out of sequence so that, you know, say this book, you know, th this, <laughs> these short stories came sort of like in a, the mid Elric saga. And then he went back and wrote the origin story and and back and forth and like in um 
you know, the nineteen eighties or nineties. You wrote the the second book in the series, uh, where where it used to just be, uh, you know, these three other books. So yeah, it's it's a bit confusing. That's why I always was kind of hesitant about reading uh, this character because sure. anytime I kind of got into okay, where do I start reading? It, it was always kind of confusing. Uh, so this is actually a good place to start. These these saga series. Um, this collects uh, each volume collects uh, four of the novels. And when I say I, I say novels in quotes because some of these uh, the novels are say some of those short stories put together at, into a novel um, so that they the, you know they make up kind of a novel but but it's actually uh, you know the in three parts, but they're actually three different short stories right. Um, but yeah, so this is a complete series and what this series does, it puts them in chronological order instead of uh, uh, for the character as opposed to when they came out. So this tells the full story um, uh, from beginning to end. Uh, there's three uh, three books in the, uh, the saga. And then the fourth book uh, that just came out in December is uh, his first novel of Elric in 15 years. Um which oh, is wow. that that citadel of forgotten myths that's that's the the newest book okay um so yeah so i i've uh, i just finished this one and uh, i'm i'm just starting uh stormbringer which is the second volume uh okay. with the second set of four novels um but yeah the uh the characters uh like i said uh was the inspiration for the witcher he's sort of a a dark anti-hero that uh, tries to do good but uh his race uh the melbonians uh they have a kind of a dark nature to them and um and he also his sword uh he got from the lord of chaos uh and it eats souls um and i i think i might have mentioned in the um in our, our previous chat that the uh the character uh, it's been an inspiration throughout the time, like like with The Witcher, and then like with uh, House of the Dragons, the Matt Smith character, especially in that first episode when he was dueling, that whole oh. um, whole black <laughs> armor and stuff was oh, yeah. was basically Elric's no get up kidding. and with yeah yeah <laughs> Man, I, I I am I am this close to like uh, jumping on and uh, jumping into this uh, series. It's the next yeah. one. I just got to finish a couple more books for yeah. my thing. Well, we'll, we'll get to later, a little bit later on my uh, yeah. sci-fi yeah. quest, but like, I'm really excited for this because yeah. we made a high, we, we made a point of calling him out for our episode last week and uh -huh. all the more reason to give him play now. Yeah. Yeah. And each, each of the novels I, in this book is, it's very different. Like the first two uh, tell a story from point A to point B. Uh, and then the, the last two novels are more or less those those short stories cobbled together to make a novel in in each of them are, are, are kind of different and much much like conan in that sometimes elric's the main character in the story and sometimes well he's always the main character but uh he kind of takes the back seat in some of the stories to uh the people that are involved in the story that he gets kind of caught up with and so th there's that interesting mix in uh, another thing is when you know uh, even in conan like you know when you have a companion that follows along with you uh in the story which is um you having a fellowship in a fantasy story is pretty common but sure. with uh elric sure. you never know if that companion is gonna die or not okay. and it, <laughs> it may be because of elric <laughs> right uh you really don't know it, 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 there's that that sense of chaos within the character and he's also always trying to find out his purpose he's trying to find his, his the history of who he of who of his people and uh yeah it's there's that, that that constant struggle for identity um which you know a lot of people read this early um early uh in their years and i, I see where that that has a, a really good appeal to people uh you know younger people that are trying to find their their purpose and and whatnot that's that's sort of the character and and yeah just the kind of the brooding nature of him and i also wanted to before we leave leave elric i uh, want to talk about 
the idea of synchronicity and mm. how coincidence happen and and weird stuff like that um i um uh, a few weeks ago i quoted a quote from uh uh one of the elric novels on facebook <laughs> And then Facebook reminded me after I posted that, you know, how Facebook will remind you of things oh. that you did like a few years ago. Right. It reminded me a few years ago that I had quoted a Conan quote <laughs> that very same day, <laughs> so many years ago, which was kind of interesting. And then um, when we were talking about 12 monkeys, um, I watched it that day um and then um facebook pulled up um something i posted a few years ago and mentioned that i had had watched that very same day another Ter terry gilliam movie uh the zero theorem which is okay. uh by the fans unofficially the third movie in the this trilogy that terry gilliam had made uh which was basically brazil 12 monkeys and uh, zero theorem uh which you know okay. we may cover yeah you know, later on and when um you know they asked terry gilliam if that was an actual trilogy he goes well evidently the fans say it is so <laughs> but that's uh, funny that's funny the um the big thing that i had uh, is funny you bring up 12 monkeys because i was listening to uh, a thing in the background today about how picard season three basically uh -huh. has the main showrunner for the uh big guy or the one of the main three showrunners for 12 monkeys uh -huh. um and basically this person in into picard um brought over a lot of the same writers oh, okay. uh and uh, what i heard i heard a very uh, glowing review of picard season three um basically imploring you to like kind of come back and like eat they even make fun of season two or one or whatever to get uh -huh. to like whatever uh yeah. i will not be back because uh <laughs> no uh i i will be there for season two of uh strange new worlds but i will not be there for season three of picard yep. i don't care how good it is but um credit, credit where due and we we, we, we kind of had a little bit of back talk back and forth about um 12 monkeys and mm -hmm. i think it's like four seasons or something well uh -huh. We that is something that we might come back to and, and cover. Like uh, we we we've said a few things, uh, like you were saying before. Yep. Elric, we are definitely going to be yeah. back for because yeah. uh, I am going to probably uh, I'm I'm about twelve hours away from finishing up what I got and then being into this guy. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah, be not... prepared. Uh, we will be going <laughs> in depth into Elric. Yeah. Uh, uh, more, yeah. more more incoming for sure. Yeah, and um. I'm, I'm kind of getting into the the dark fantasy type thing and uh, like I, I was reading uh elric while listening to <laughs> black metal on uh, on youtube and uh, <laughs> another synchronicity thing is i was listening to that and then youtube was recommended a, another album i was like okay let's let that play and it was kaladin Bro Broad, um which is another black metal band and I, I was really enjoying it uh, while listening or reading Elric. And I was like, well, what is this band? And I looked them up <laughs> and that band is named after a character in another fantasy series. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. And I went ahead and uh, ordered that book. Um, it's the Gardens of the Moon uh, okay. by Steven Erickson. It seems kind of interesting. It's a 10 book series um uh, that <laughs> that kind of uh the the thing that they kept saying about it was that it um had really good world building um so i'll i'll, I'll give that a try after i finish up the uh elwork series and uh and see what that's like <laughs> awesome 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 and, uh, uh, and yeah cool cool yeah anything else um yeah I, just one other book that i picked up uh this one's another one from childhood that i never got around to reading which i wanted to was uh Stephen R. Donaldson, uh the Tom the Chronicles of Thomas Thomas Covenant, uh, The Unbelievers, book one. And um I was I was kind of looking at on Goodreads, uh the reviews on it, and um the the re reviews were very mixed. Um some people absolutely hated it and some people okay. loved it. Uh but what got me to buy it was 
that uh, it the beginning of the book takes place present day, and the character gets um somehow he gets trans uh transmit or he gets put into this uh this other kind of fantasy world and basically the character is a leper a leper you know he has uh has leprosy and the character is um very off-putting and Mm -hmm. uh very hard to like Mm -hmm. and he doesn't like anything and he doesn't like being in this world and um just the dichotomy of <laughs> you know someone would probably be more likely happy to be in this fantasy land but uh yeah you know, the the fact that <laughs> it kind of turns it on its head for a fantasy i'm very kind of curious to see what that's like um again i i may dislike it like every like a lot of people do but uh but yeah it seemed i'm i'm always looking for something different than you know the lord of the rings has already been told so i'm looking for something different you know um Mm -hmm. you know a a different take on the on the genre and that's very much what like elric is as well is like uh moorcock um wanted to turn um you know tolkien stuff on its head and and tell something different so oh he did for sure yeah (laughs) Uh, well with with that i will uh, lead into uh my library um <laughs> and uh this is the the la- latest book i i got uh, i finished it a little bit earlier today um um this is the terran fleet command saga uh books one two three four and i think there's five i got one more i gotta pin up but um i gotta say like this is probably a little bit better than average um i'd probably put this on equal footing with the uh, wayward galaxy which was also a five book uh, series. Um, It it keeps you engaged. Um, I love it. (laughs) It is um, everything that you would expect from like a sci-fi or, or, or uh, or, uh, sci-fi opera or um, military sci-fi kind of like all blends out and together. Um, And I think that uh, you would have a lot of fun with it. Anyway, I have uh, pinned here uh, one through books, uh, one through four on my description um but as you say check it out um you you might give it a go uh mm-hmm. if not that's fine too uh but yeah. uh and i want I, I think the first two books were if you're a prime uh, or excuse me an audible member um and you have an active current subscription they give you the inside uh track to um rent books um on the fly I think that's actually how I got into this. And of course they sucked me in. So I had to buy mm-hmm. books. I think uh, one and two were free. Um, I could mm-hmm. listen to uh, uh, for my membership, but um, three, four, and five, I got to pay for. So uh, <laughs> they, they know how to make money uh, yeah, anyway. Um, it, it, yeah, they, they got that from the drug dealers. You know, the first one's always <laughs> free. <laughs> right. But uh, Tori L. Harris, great mm-hmm. author, um, know what they're doing. Uh, narration is top notch what you would expect for audible um mm-hmm. i've <laughs> i have definitely heard some um side audiobooks uh that were not the the quality was <laughs> like basically from like 1995 and they were just mm-hmm. rehashing the thing anyway uh with that being i want to roll into your youtube recommendation for this mm-hmm. week and uh, <laughs> we, we are uh looks like we're in florida here <laughs> a little bit <laughs> with the gas station yeah, I'm not sure where the location is. This is got recommended to me uh, on another <laughs> podcast, and I checked it out, and uh, <laughs> I was entertained by it. Basically, the the premise of it is is there's a gas station, uh, and uh, you know there's there's constantly shoplifters, right? So <laughs> so basically, they've decked out this this one location with all these cameras. Um, so they've got every angle oh, uh, for them, <laughs> and, uh, and so they they uh, they capture the the footage of someone getting a uh, shoplifting, and then the um, the uh, the guy the clerk at the desk will uh, run out and confront them. But basically, what they do is uh, the clerk that does the videos he does his uh, commentary over over it and he does the voices for the characters and uh it's really entertaining <laughs> like he's like oh yeah uh, uh, yeah he's just kind of kind of does the what the the 
the shoplifter, the voice in their head is what, what, what they're, they're thinking about different things. He kind of, you know, makes up what they're thinking and, and does a, a very uh, entertaining <laughs> uh, commentary of it. And then, then you also have the, like I said, the confrontation at the end where they, uh, <laughs> where they inevitably deny that they shoplifted. And <laughs> right. Of course. Right. Uh, yeah, and so so basically, they're he's taking a negative with uh, the shoplifting <laughs> and the money that they're losing, and they're making these videos that gets uh, some of them almost get uh, uh, some get a million views. Right. So they're they're making more money than they they lost from the right. <laughs> the Cheetos or whatever they they've stole. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Shoot, that's, that's funny. Oh, I I kind of want to see what. Well, okay, so he just like confronts them, and then like they're just like, oh, whatever. yeah. On the, sometimes they do, um, <laughs> they do a collaboration with that that fave trip. Uh, that's another channel that does okay. that. So uh, that's that one. He, he was he wasn't there, so he didn't get to. Uh, do, he just does the voiceover on that one, right, that particular right. video. On on other ones, he does the uh, like. If you go back, uh, there's the the Chip Ahoy one uh, up towards the top is one of them that I saw recently. Yeah, the 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 chewy chips ahoy up in the upper right hand corner yeah that lady in the uh, blue shirt uh, oh yeah okay, okay. yeah if you go to the end of that he he does the uh confrontation with her <laughs> oh, and she goes she, get out of my door <laughs> he always gets their license plate like, all right him. well yeah well you know i i got you on camera so yeah. uh, smile <laughs> that's funny Yep, <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, uh, for my YouTube pick of the week, um, I shortcut it and I'll say, check us hey, out. Hey, I know that channel. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Uh, you know what? We got thirty-one uh, subscribers. We're like looking for more or whatever, mm -hmm. man. Uh, as the dude says in the Big Lebowski. <laughs> uh, and uh, but you know what? Uh, all joking, kidding aside, uh, we got a big back catalog. We are rolling up on episode one hundred, and uh, we're. Thomas yep, and I are that's... still hashing it out, but we are going to come up, come out with something uh, substantial. We'll, we'll, yeah. We'll put it that way. Yep. Yep. And that'll be uh, next, next week, uh, our hundredth episode. So indeed. Yeah. Look forward to that. <laughs> indeed. And uh, shout out to our uh, episode on uh, Avatar 2. Uh, you know, uh, Avatar 2 is very popular. Uh, it's not for me personally, but uh, you know what? As a dad, I could see, uh, I could see going to see it uh thomas i would still recommend uh you wait for it to come out on uh streaming yeah <laughs> uh i think uh, uh but uh, i'll i'll all that aside uh if you really want to give it a proper good watch um well it's in theaters now uh, you should probably go see it in the theater uh that's the mm -hmm. way that avatar one was made uh 3d and all that uh gimmickry uh and all that good stuff uh, and uh, <laughs> After two is no different. Uh, it's uh, big and wide and uh, very long, very long, uh, <laughs> very long. Uh, it took me, took me yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's good watch. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there uh, on the positive yeah. side. Uh, it's a it's a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Never gonna come again. <laughs> so uh, I would say yes. make it count with your uh, you know family or uh, loved ones or little, little yeah. kiddos, ideally. Yeah. This is the movie to take them to uh, see in the theater. Yeah, that's probably the the only movie that's out in the theaters right now. <laughs> There's a lot of it's kind of a drought as far as what to watch. So that could be uh, added to why uh, it's doing so well. There's uh, not a whole lot out there to actually go out and see. <laughs> I will say I am so proud of my kiddos, uh, mm -hmm. and I thank you, Thomas, because they both saw Megan. Uh, oh, uh -huh. the other, yeah, they, they saw it with the, the other weekend, uh, not in the theater, but in the streaming. Mm -hmm. I guess it, uh, it's still out there, but uh, uh -huh. and they liked it, so uh, that's cool. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Thomas. You're uh, in, in, influencing my kiddos, so thanks, <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, all good, all good, all good. <laughs> yeah, and with that, uh, do you have anything else you want to cover? Or, or I think that's uh. That's it. I mean, uh, yeah, there was kind of a, a kind of slow week as far as news and whatnot, I guess, just because of everything. And uh, we're kind of a little bit of kind of a week late on the uh, James Cameron thing. But, you know, that's that's the price we pay for doing a once a week, uh, you know, kind of deal. So, yeah, I, the, the, the other uh, things were like really, really hardcore drama. 
uh, and yeah. nobody's going to be talking yeah. about it a year from now. So like, I'm glad <laughs> we didn't cover it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at the, same, at the same time, you know, uh, if you know, you know, then that's yeah, too. right. Yeah. And I, I saw where uh, Frost said something again. I was like, OK, she's she's been done with. <laughs> I, you know, the, the worst the worst possible insult that I could ever give to anybody is to not give them an, uh, a listen. So, right. Yeah. Uh, no. And we, we've already covered that to, to death. Uh, and uh, <laughs> definitely, I was definitely opinionated, uh, probably over the line, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> accept my punishment. Uh, anyway, uh, that's me, been uh, Mike and Thomas. Yep. And uh, we'll see you next week. We will. All right. We're closing up the grab bag. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>